In the same week, we found out about the delay to Ethereum's upgrade known as the Merge, which was expected to be in June, but is now some TBD months later. We found out the status of another June hard fork, this time on Cardano. And unlike Ethereum's upgrade, Cardano's Vassal upgrade is on track for a tentative date of the 29th of June. As you can imagine, this went over really well with the Cardano community. The tentative June hard fork date was tweeted out within seconds of it being announced. I know this, as I was hoping to be the first to tweet it, but found two to three other people had beaten me to it in the 20 seconds it took for me to type it out and hit send. Now, of course, there's always a chance it can still get delayed closer to the time. This is crypto after all. But in the latest Cardano mid-month update, we were told it was cold complete and in the middle of testing, with a launch on testnet due soon. This is a testament to what Charles has previously said, that updates to Cardano will become easier and faster due to the solid foundation that has been built for it. Unlike Ethereum, it isn't wrangling with years of technical debt, nor a self-inflicted difficulty bomb. Cardano's platform has been built thoughtfully and carefully from the ground up, and the fruits of this labor are starting to show. Not that Cardano is struggling, we were told that the blockchain has been performing exceptionally well across all dApps with no backlog, thanks to all the smaller improvements that have been made recently, and with more of these improvements on their way before the significant June upgrade. And on top of all of that, there is an even bigger scalability improvement coming at the end of the year in the form of input endorsers. IOG said this would be the year they focus on scaling, and they are sure delivering on that. John Woods, director of Cardano Architecture, took 15 minutes to explain various technical subjects in a way even your friendly neighborhood troll could understand. This is in contrast to Ethereum, which tries to have a full-blown computer within the on-chain Ethereum virtual machine. SIPs and other improvements. Here he outlined the improvements that are coming with the Vassal hard fork. There was a multitude of them, but they all pertain to making the on-chain code much more efficient and easier to work with. Script sizes will go down by 20%, the interpreter which reads the code will be 40% faster, and simple transactions will be 80% faster. I recommend watching the video if you want details on exactly how this will be achieved. The next one's a bit of a mouthful, but here goes. Determinism, parallelism, and concurrency. Here John talked about Cardano's EUTXO design being like a DAG, a direct acyclic graph, and this allows for parallel processing. This is a technology behind Hydra, and why you could theoretically scale up to any number of TPS you want under this model. For those of you with a computing background, it made me think of Ethereum being like a relational database and Cardano being like Apache Spark, built for enormous workloads. After John's piece, we heard from some of the dApp developers building on Cardano. They were all DeFi related, yet they all had their own unique take, demonstrating how Cardano is seeing a Cambrian explosion of dApps experimenting with different ideas and different models. Meld, a lending and borrowing protocol aiming to replace banks. They already have their staking model in place and are working on the technical and regulatory hurdles to get up and running with lending and borrowing. You don't often hear about DAP saying they are working on the messy legal side of things, but this just highlights Meld's ambition to disrupt traditional banking. Ergo Dex, a non-custodial Dex being built across both Ergo and Cardano blockchains. Non-custodial for those that don't follow means you can keep your tokens in your wallet. No need to transfer it to the control of the DEX. Just one of the innovations that building on Cardano allows. Ergo DEX is due to hit mainnet in a month's time. Musi Swap. This was the first DEX to be launched on Cardano and so they already have an order book style DEX running on mainnet and on Milcomeda and are now building out an AMM, aka Uniswap style of DEX, which is due to come out on mainnet very soon. It seems like MusiSwap are covering all bases, uh, but I'd be interested in finding out a little bit more about their AMM DEX and what differentiates it from all the others. Um, or is it simply a copy and paste of an actual Uniswap DEX um, now that they're using Milcomeda, which allows for those sort of Ethereum contracts. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but as um, some of the research I've shared on Twitter shows, 
that the Uniswap V3 uh, protocol still doesn't protect you from impermanent loss. Um, so I'd be interested to know if Musiswap are trying to do anything about that. And finally, Ardana. Ardana are looking to build an ecosystem around their very own stablecoin, DUSD. Given the uncertainty around when Jed will launch, this may become the very first native stablecoin to launch on Cardano, and that will be very much welcome. Overall, this was more of a defiant status update, as if aimed at the fudsters out there. And I'll leave you with John Wood's closing thoughts, that Cardano will become the greatest smart contract platform for the next five years. That's it from me. If you enjoyed listening to this, then please give me a thumbs up down below or leave a comment um, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Also, follow me along on Twitter if you want to hear my daily ramblings. Other than that, have a great day.